One of the cool things I've had in my studio for some time is this really great bench that my dad built me for Christmas. It's got drawers, it's got a cabinet. The only problem is he left parts of it unfinished because he knew that I was gonna 3D print parts to adapt to it. And one of the first things I need to do is drawer pulls because all I have now is various tapes acting as drawer pulls. So uh, let's design, print, and install some drawer pulls. I'm Joel, and this is 3D Printing Nerd. So the way that this was built is there are drawers on this side and over here is a cabinet where I keep a lot of my fan mail and other supplies. The drawers themselves, some of them are a little bit taller than others. They get a little bit taller as you go lower. I have this really, really sweet blue tape that I'm using as a drawer pull, but I think having some sort of 3D printed drawer pull is going to look better. So let's get the notebook and let's design. Let's see, I'm gonna want something that I can grip onto. So kind of like that. And I don't want a knob. I want more of a, a horizontal kind of place that I can grab, similar to the tape. So lengthwise there, and I want a little kind of raised surface at the end. So it's not where my finger slips off of it. I can actually hold on to it. Aha, I got an idea. All right, let's get out the notebook. Here we go. So if this is our drawer, let's say it's kind of going that way. I just want a solid pull that I can come out like this and then have some sort of cylinder kind of on top of it. Man, I suck at drawing. Let's just go to Fusion 360. Hey, here we are. We're in Fusion 360. Uh, let's let's uh, let's start a sketch. And uh, I know that the width I measured out, I kind of want it to be about 70 millimeters, and I want it to be about 15 millimeters tall. So I'm going to go here to rectangle, and I'm going to do a center rectangle. Drag it right out from origin. I'm going to go 15 millimeters here and 70 here. That looks good. I'm gonna click on it and hit E for extrude. And I'm going to bring it out 40 millimeters. Let's see from the top, there we go. So 40 millimeters, that looks pretty good. Now for what I want on top, that kind of that cylinder, that bar to, to hold onto, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna create a sketch and I want it to be on this plane right here. But in order to click on it, I need to turn the body off. So I can click on the plane. I can turn the body back on. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna do a C for a center circle and I'm gonna bring it out, I'm gonna do 20, 20 millimeters. That looks pretty good. So it's resting right on top here. And what I can do now is click this, hit E for extrude, and I'm gonna bring it out. But rather than this, I'm gonna, instead of choose one side, I'm gonna do symmetric. I don't want it to be a cut. I do want it to be a join. Well, that's not too bad. Let's see, 36, let's bring it out just a little bit more. How about 37? 37 millimeters, I think that looks good. And now we have essentially a basic handle shape. Uh, I don't want this side right here to be so flat. And if it sticks out here and it's printing from the bottom, I'm gonna need support. So I'm gonna click right here. Let's see, right there. I'm gonna click right. I'm gonna hold down shift and click here. I'm gonna hit F for fill it. And then I'm gonna just bring it in. So if you look right here, I can, I can bring it in so that the curve starts inside the flat piece. That's kind of cool looking. Let's um, maybe, let's bring it in four millimeters. If I look on the other side, it's the exact same. I'm gonna hit okay. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Okay, now the, the tough part. So let's see, I need to rotate this. There we go. There's the bottom. What I wanna do is create a sketch here. So I'm gonna say create sketch and I'm gonna click on that, that part of the model. Here we go. I'm gonna first hit L and I'm gonna draw a line from here to here and I'm gonna hit escape. Now I'm gonna go over here and click the line and I'm gonna hit construction. I could also click it and click or hit X, I guess. But this is gonna allow me to do operations on this side and then mirror them over here. Uh, for the screws that I'm using, uh, I measured them out. I'm gonna hit C for circle. I'm gonna put it about right here. I measured them out, and I think if I drill a four millimeter hole, everything will fit just fine. And then the nuts that I have, how am I gonna put those in? Uh, what I thought about doing is taking a little chunk out right here and then letting the, the nuts slide in. So I could slide the nuts in 
and then the screw would tap through this side and then the space between the bottom and where the nuts slide in would be able to be compressed and that's what would hold it. So let's do that. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. I'm gonna go sketch, I'm gonna go polygon and I'm gonna go circumscribed polygon. I'm gonna start at the center and I'm just gonna follow right along here. And the, the distance that it has is from center to a flat side of the polygon. And when I measured the nuts that I had, they were 9.5, I believe, millimeters. And so half the distance is going to be 4.75. So I'll type that in just like that. Now when I rechecked my screws, I need to do a five millimeter hole. So let's do that. And now in order to make a little slot right here for the nuts to be able to slide into, it's gonna be easy, trust me about this. So I'm gonna hit L for line. And I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna bring it up 90 degrees and it's gonna intersect with the top of that part of the sketch. I'm gonna hit L for line again. I'm gonna click here and bring it up at 90 degrees and intersect with the top of the sketch there. I hope you see where we're going. And now we have all we need. I'm gonna stop the sketch, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. And so the screw hole, I do need to extrude and I need to bring it up. We'll say just, how about 40, 40 millimeters. And it's gonna be a cut. And that's going to cut up into the model and that's where the, the length of the shaft of the screw is gonna go. I'm gonna hit okay. We need to go back here and we need to turn sketch three back on so that we can see where those lines are that we created. So let's let's click here and click here and hit E for extrude. And we need to do four millimeters, I believe it is. I believe I measured the height of the nut to be a little bit less than four. And so if we do four, we're good. Uh, but we don't want it down here. And so this is when we do an offset. Uh, let's see, instead of the profile plane, we're gonna do an offset and we're gonna offset it minus, tw oops, minus 20. And see how that offset now starts the extrude cut further into the model. 20 might be a bit much, so let's go minus 10. Ah, that's perfect. And I'm gonna hit okay. So we have the shaft for the screw to go into and we have the place for the, the nut to slide into. Now we need to bring it over to the other side. And I was mistaken. So I created this construction line, which allows you to mirror sketches. But what we're going to do is mirror features. So if I go up to create mirror and I go, so make sure features is selected. So it wants me to select which features. Well, you just come down here to the timeline and you select and select. Holding shift allows you to select multiple. You select these operations we just did. And now we need to select the mirror plane. So we don't need that line anymore because it's asking us to select a plane. If we turn off the view of the body, then we can click a plane and it happens to be this plane right here. I'm gonna turn it back on and you can see where it's going to be. That looks great. I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have the operations we did on this side on the other side and it's very, very symmetrical. There we go. That's it. That's all you have to do to create the model. Some people I would think would be worried about putting support in here. I'm not, and here's why. So when you slide the nut in, the compression is going to happen between this side of the model and this part of where the nut slides into. And that's all gonna be built just fine. This up here, it's going to be printing in midair a little bit, but it's going to bridge this across and then it's gonna keep going. I think it's gonna recover and I think it's gonna print just fine. And what I don't want, I don't want support in here that I will then have a hard time removing. Well, let's go print this out in PLA and test it out. Here we go. This is it. This is, uh, hmm. I like the look of it, but I believe this part right here is just a bit too long. I don't need so much surface for my thumb and my finger to grab onto. So I think what we need to do is go back into Fusion 360 and change the height of this part. All right, this is what's cool about 3D modeling and 3D printing. You get to adapt the design once you test it out. We tested this and it appears that it's too long or too deep or too, it's too something. The, the gripping surface is too much for me. And I think we need to shrink it a little bit. And here's the shortcut on how to do that. You go along your timeline and you find the extrude for this part, which I believe is here. I'm gonna hit the right mouse button and go edit feature. And now it tells me I extruded at 40 millimeters, which I thought was okay, but I'm gonna change that to 30 millimeters and hit okay. Uh-oh, because we made our shafts for the screw to go into too long, it actually 
puts those through the model. So now what we need to do is find the extrude for the shafts. I'm gonna edit that feature and I'm gonna bring that down to 32 and I'm gonna hit okay. And because it's a mirrored operation later on, it automatically updates the model and we have a new one. Well, let's go print this out and let's give it a try. Here we go. There's the, oh, that is much better. Look at that, a little bit shorter, much better to hold on to. In fact, uh, this is the long one. See, that's the, the big one. See how far that sticks out? And if we actually use this one, and here they are. So there's, there's an up close. That's just, that's perfect. That's gonna work out just well. Eventually. Plus thanks to 3D printing, I made a jig. This is the bolt hole pattern. So there's the, or the screw hole. So there they go. See, they go in right there. This is gonna tell me where to put my drill bits. And I used this piece right here. So when I measure across and find center, I want to mark center or I want to line that up, that little part right there with center. And then I did another revision. <laughs> There we go. So I took out that little center part there, but on top, look at this. I've got these parts that hold it on and then I have this little arrow center finder thing right there. The purpose of that is, well here, let me show you. When measuring, I figured it was gonna be tough to measure against this part of the drawer and I was gonna mark center on the top and that also means I need to know where center is up here. So this is cool. I can find center on one plane and then I can drill on the next plane. This is gonna put the handle down about that far and I can actually use this jig to make it the exact same distance from top across all of the drawers. Look at that, we've got our piece that we want and we have our jig or our template. So let's take that off. Let's get our tape, which is over here and a pencil, which is right here. And let's measure across and find out where center is. It is 33 and 7 eighths across. So half of 33 is uh, 16 and a half. That half is 8 sixteenths and 7 eighths is 14 sixteenths. So divide that 7 eighths in two, you get 7 sixteenths. So 7 sixteenths plus the 8 sixteenths from the 30, from the 16, okay. So I did math and it looks like we're gonna do 16 and 15 sixteenths as the half point. Let's see if the tape will stay. So here's 16 and 15 sixteenths. It's gonna be right there. And now thanks to my little template, I can put it right here. That tells me where center is. And then I can mark where my drill needs to go. Bam, time to drill. That's not bad. I'm gonna use these screws right here. These are number 10, 24, one and a half inch. I'm gonna use these nuts, number 10, 24 nuts that match. And I'm gonna use these flat washers for the inside. That should be easy. Here's our piece right here. We're gonna use these nuts, two of them in fact. We're gonna put them inside, just like that. I'm gonna put my finger over either side. I'm gonna put it right here, make sure everything matches up which it does, and I'm gonna use this screwdriver. Let's see if the screws bite. I think they are. That's fantastic. <laughs> Here's the real test. Oh, brilliant. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Opens and closes. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, okay. That worked out. That's great. I'm gonna use this PLA printed piece as the test and what I really want to do is use the Matter Hackers Nylon X because it's a, it's kind of a, it's a nylon with some carbon fiber in it and it's a, it's black and it's, it has a good feel to it. The PLA is great and I think this would work, but this is, this is my desk. This is my bench. This is mine. I, I want that, that different feel for it. So let's take this piece that works. We're going to call the PLA piece a prototype. We're going to print out six in Nylon X and then we're going to install them. The problem with 3D printing these is that the camera was running and I forgot to hit record and I removed it from the build plate. And so this is gonna be a reenactment. That is just brilliant. That is gonna look, look so, so, so good. Let's take them over. Let's try them out. Here's where they're gonna go. Let's take one. So this is it right here and let's Oh, you know what, that screw, uh, that's not gonna fit. Uh, well, here, what I can do, oh, 
so it doesn't fit but just barely. So once I embed the nuts, the screw will tighten against this as well. I could always drill it out, but I don't think that's really gonna be necessary because it's going to screw into this and the screw and it should be a tighter hold, maybe? Let's try it. The nuts should go in. Let's try. Oh yeah. Yep, and I can just use these to push it into place. Just like that. Oh, that was actually easier than I thought it was gonna be. Let's get this unscrewed. Later. Maybe asking yourself why I'm not using a screwdriver drill to, to do this. And that's, that's simple. I didn't think about it. I mean, I could go put the bit on, I guess. Kids these days, man, they'll never know that they had to use a power tool to make screws go into plastic or wood. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Oh, why isn't that one going in? Huh, I'm having a problem on this side. Hmm. So there was this side right here. And I have an idea. Oh, look at that. The nut is spinning. So that's a problem I didn't quite expect. So I could jam a screwdriver into there while I'm drilling it in. Let's do that. And then we will, because there's already, there's already nuts in here. So let's, let's just make it work. Oh, that worked. Okay. There, hey, look at that. Oh, that's on there. That is not going anywhere. Look at that. Oh, that is solid. I love it. Well, it looks like we, we have a success right here with the first one. It does look like the nut was turning inside of the carbon fiber nylon model. And I'm not really too worried about that. Again, these are drawer pulls and I'm not gonna be taking that nut back out. However, I think the reason that it started turning is because the screw, as it was going through, maybe hit some of that material that I didn't support. Hmm, I don't know. Well, I've got five more to install it on. So this was a test and this worked. And this little template jig was a test and it worked. And I've got a whole bunch more of these carbon fiber nylon, nylon X handles. Let's just, <laughs> let's go down the drawers and let's just install them. I'm hoping that this is a montage, some sort of cool epic sequence. That is my wish for all of this. I'm going to put on my drill bit. Where is found it? My drill bit. Switch over. Here we are, we're down to the last one. And I want to take this opportunity while I'm installing it to kind of give you a breakdown of what I think of things. I think this is a great project. I think this is also the perfect type of project for 3D printing because we had to iterate a design. Isn't that what it's all about? Being able to iterate and being able to change parameters to, to make a part suit what you need. Because we were able to very easily print out test pieces and then once those pieces were good enough which it only took one revision which is great but i mean you could have easily done multiple multiple revisions but thanks to thanks to this it only took one one revision and in fact my template it took a revision as well once i had an idea of what was going on i like the template idea and i like being able to just like let's get this drilled in there we go Oh, those look great. Uh, I like the idea of the template because you use the 3D model itself in order to define where the screw holes need to be. Uh, I liked that I was able to prototype in PLA and I know that PLA could have worked, right? I could have had a rainbow of, of handles here, but I really wanted to use that Nylon X because I really like the look of it. If I'm ever to stain the wood or paint it or something like that, then I think that contrasty black will go against it. Just great. I hope you enjoyed this project. I'm gonna take the model for this and the model for the template, and I'll put a link to it down below. I think I'm gonna use Gumroad, charge a buck or two for it if you really, I mean, I showed you how to do it for free in this video, but if you really want it and you don't wanna pull out Fusion 360 and you wanna print a hundred jillion of these things, I'll put that link down there. Beyond all that, really appreciate you watching this video. And if you got this far, 
You're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.